I'm going to discuss the SOS architecture assessment model portion of the Phylosos. The first thing um, to discuss is that the capabilities of this model uh, are very wide. They allow you to do a whole number of things. Nonlinearity in trade-offs, uh, any number of attributes are, are acceptable. Uh, we used four as an example, but you could use many. Um, we capture multiple stakeholders' understanding of key performance attributes in the model. Uh, that's, a, that's a critical part, and you can discuss them, play them against each other, make sure they understand what this means in terms of the other uh, stakeholders' uh, uh, opinions. Uh, we have algorithms to determine the value of the attributes given a, uh, an architecture. The, the attributes of the SOS should depend on the architecture, the way you connect the systems and which systems you use. If an attribute does not depend on those types of uh, issues in the SOS, then it's probably not appropriate to assess the SOS um, based on the architecture. So there could be attributes that have relatively little to do with, with the uh, architecture. You would not use those attributes as, as part of this test. We can do what-if analysis. We can change assumptions. We can look at uh, uh, other outside influences. We can change cost models, things like that. And uh, because they're modular uh, algorithms for each of the attributes, you can uh, change them up. Uh, uh, move them around, um, and I'll show you a number of ways that, that we do that. You can completely change attributes if you want, um, and you can mess with the relative priorities of the attributes to uh, make sure that, that you're looking at a robust solution that is not highly dependent on a very specific uh, framework or uh, part of it uh, by playing with the model. What's the value of the model? By playing around with these things, we can make sure that you understand what the structure of the SOS really means and how it will impact the way you accomplish the task that it's designed to accomplish. Um, it's possible that this is this slightly different way of looking at things, or a very different way, depending on your uh, background, uh, can help you understand things better than the way uh, typically we have used to analyze system of systems in the past. Um, where can we use this? We can discover things about the, the stakeholders' firmly held beliefs. Uh, we can find new ways for systems to work together because many times when we put things together, our previous basis for understanding things interferes with looking at things in an open mind by having an assessment model that depends on the architecture in well-defined ways, uh, and because there's so many of these ways to fit them together, uh, it's hard to know how it will work out in the end before you actually play around with it in many scenarios. And uh, finally, it can help you with your negotiations with the stakeholders in the various systems of the system of systems to make sure you understand um, or they understand what part they will play and how much of their capability you need. Uh, future possibilities for this approach is to improve the visualization of the impact of these many variables. Visualization was a very important part of the thing, and if you're going to design system of systems, you should think very hard about finding a way to visualize the results that you will get from your analysis. And we could also put in some automatic adjustment of model parameters, things like that. We didn't do that. We were just trying to make sure that the thing, when you put all these pieces together, worked. And it works pretty well. So uh, I mentioned there has to be some kind of advantage to having a system of systems. If you didn't get that advantage, uh, you could just add more systems to uh, increase the performance of your of your task. Uh, it, but by including the systems in a system of systems where they work together, you can increase, increase the collaboration between them, improving their efficiency. Almost always, I would suspect that 
you do something better with the system of systems, even though it takes some overhead to make the system of systems work, the improvement that you get is normally well worth it. It's normally much more than one to one. Improving your efficiency or not duplicating efforts, making sure that things work together better. This is typically what we do all the time when we see f systems and optimize them. Um, you can also achieve economies of scale and affordability, for example, because if you develop a new interface between systems that had not previously been interfaced, not only can you use that interface over and over again wherever you have those systems, um, but similar systems may also be able to use the interface on the other end. So you can develop the new interface or tactic between classes of systems, and then you reap the benefit every time you use those classes of systems. So there's another way that having a system of systems should help you perform a task better. Another thing that uh, system of systems can help you do is improve your robustness by having the systems be aware of what each one can do, and therefore if one is missing, the other systems being aware of that can change their behavior. These improvements depend on the architecture, the, the types and numbers and arrangements of the systems that you choose for your system of systems, and also how you make them interface, which ones talk to each other, what do they say, things like that. Um, so by having a model that represents this advantage of the SOS, then you can evaluate by various attributes, however you choose to uh, uh, look at your system of systems, it could be affordability, it could be how fast it performs, it could be uh, um, how much it costs to operate the system. So there's a difference between building the system and operating the system and so on. So by evaluating those uh, components of your evaluation of the overall system in this kind of fuzzy uh, terminology, which is the way we typically talk about systems. Uh, if you look at uh, the government cost performance assessment reports, they have color grades on how well a system is doing. This is for acquisition. So you could be gold or you could be silver. And the, the point of this is not that, that there's uh, some uh, absolute measure, but it's, it's an opinion of the reviewer or the stakeholder. Uh, that says this way of doing things, where you are now, is pretty good or pretty bad. So the way we did this in our approach, and you can use any number of attributes or levels, gradations, in the attributes as well, we used four unacceptable, marginal, acceptable, and exceeds requirements. So. There's kind of, you know, you even when you're just evaluating affordability, you still could be affor evaluating affordability of several parts of the system. You'd be looking at spare parts. You'd be looking at uh, gas usage in the future, all those kinds of things. If the price of gas changes, then the affordability of the whole system set changes. So there's this kind of range that uh, you come up with to evaluate each of the attributes that you choose. Um, and typically, one reviewer might say, yeah, that's kind of on the low end of good. Another reviewer might say, eh, I think that's kind of average instead of good, or maybe on the high end of average. So there's some overlap. There's a little uncertainty here. Um, we just use type 1 fuzzy systems where there's a little bit of overlap at the edges of the various gradations. Uh, but there's other ways to do this with uh, more complicated systems as well. This is the uh, picture, so the, the rough picture I showed you before, a very trapezoidal. It turns out that makes kind of uh, uh, a little bit uh, funny looking sharp corners in your, in your uh, evaluation criteria. A and so in MATLAB, this is the picture that you get. They have a, a routine that, that makes this very easy to use. And uh, we rounded the corners just a tiny bit. We used performance, affordability, flexibility. In other words, if I'm trying to build up a whole bunch of systems and they each uh, contribute some capability, typically I can get maybe various degrees of the capability from different systems. 
if I have two systems that can give me the capability, uh, that gives me some f developmental flexibility. If I'm limited to one system and I must have that system, it's kind of like a single source uh, problem. If there's some problem with that or they don't want to do it or they say it costs more money than you can afford, then you're kind of up a tree as the manager of the system of systems. But if you have several sources, uh, even though the capability might not be as good, it gives you more flexibility. So that's what developmental flexibility is. And robustness uh, is what happens if you remove a system entirely. Does your system of systems still work? This could happen because a system is down for maintenance or uh, you know, in the field it's shipped off to do some other task and it's not available for you today. So a good system of systems, in my opinion, would be one that is robust to the removal of some systems, either for maintenance or combat losses or however you're using this thing, uh, a strike if it's a subcontractor, uh, a prime contractor situation, and so on. So um, that's what we have. This is the way the, the membership functions look in uh, MATLAB. And that's in the fuzzy domain. It's kind of smooth and even, one to four. Uh, the scale here on the bottom is uh, one to four. That's in the fuzzy domain. But on, on the real domain, uh, we still have some measurements that we use to come up with that estimate. So, for example, this one is performance, and uh, we're scaling the performance from uh, 0.4 at the very worst to 5 at the very best. And you can see on the graph that the scaling is kind of nonlinear. So you can expand the ranges or contract the ranges by doing this mapping from the fuzzy domain to the real domain. Sometimes we call it the crisp domain. So yes, you measure maybe two or three things to say this is our affordability. And uh, they fall in the range between uh, um, 65 million and 85 million dollars. Then that's a... Uh, uh, a pretty good um, uh, range for the affordability. Whereas if it's $100 million, I begin to say, no, it's not very affordable. And uh, so this, this little picture on the right shows uh, a grouping of capabilities to show that several systems can provide each capability in the columns there. The final column is communications capability. So even some systems don't have uh, communications. They have to deliver a piece of paper somewhere instead of having RF communications. But these various capabilities in these chunks there are represented on each of the various systems. And then in the bottom we show uh, uh, this scale of which attributes are we measuring, uh, what the ranges are, and so on. So when we put together a system of systems, um, we show the connections between the systems and you can see in this circle, system 1 through 22, if they're connected, there's a line between them. And if they're not in the system of systems, then there's no lines connecting them. So they're not part of the system of systems because they're not talking to the, any of the other systems. So, for example, in this particular uh, picture we have, system 3, 4, 5, and 6 are not in the system. Although we get the capabilities, that they provide from system one and two. So we're not, without that capability, we just don't have as much as if we had all of them. On the other hand, we don't have to pay for those systems either. So there's advantages in performance or affordability or flexibility or robustness uh, as you change the makeup of these systems. And this little picture on the bottom just shows in the systems we would have ones and zeros representing whether they're there. And in the interfaces, we would have ones and zeros representing whether they are interfaced. So sometimes when you uh, connect uh, 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 one platform with another, uh, a fighter with a ground station or a UAV with a ground station and so on, that's an interface. And you might have to build that interface. That's a developmental part of the model. And then when you use it, that's a, a separate cost. You're using the system, not so much as the interface. Um, so that was one of them. Another way to look at this is when you combine all of them, uh, you're looking at the, the, 
the sum total for the system of systems of the, in this case, four attributes, uh, and you can plot them on this, grace, on this graph. This is a, a Kvyat chart, and it shows kind of the relative balance between your various attributes. So the larger this enclosed area is, the better off you are in all these um, uh, attributes. So your system of systems, an ideal system of systems, would be a very large enclosed area giving you good values out of all the performance attributes. Um, we write fuzzy inference system rules uh, to combine the attributes. It's very simple. This part of it is very simple. And the plain language rules are on the left. You have to spell this out a little more carefully in MATLAB. That's on the right. But so if I say if any attribute is unacceptable, then the whole system of system is unacceptable. That seems a fairly reasonable thing. If, if it's completely unacceptable in performance, even if it's very good in affordability, I'm pretty sure I don't want that system of systems. Uh, and the same for down the rest of them. If all of them are marginal, then the SOS is not just marginal, it's unacceptable. I don't even talk to me about them. Uh, now, if, if one or two of the, syst of the attributes are marginal, and, but if the other attributes more than make up for that, maybe I'll accept that system of systems. So that's this fourth rule down. If performance and affordability are very good, exceeds, uh, but the flexibility and robustness are marginal, then the SOS is still okay. So if I had a, an arrangement I'm looking at, picking between two architectures that give me a system of systems, and I have very good performance and affordability, but not so good flexibility and robustness, that's still a pretty good system of systems compared to maybe one that's all merely average. Um, so uh, I would certainly uh, consider that one or compare it more closely to one where all the attributes are merely average or slightly above average. So that's what we do, and it doesn't take very many rules. I mean, you can write, you can write fuzzy systems with hundreds of rules. They're a little more difficult to understand. We're using relatively simple things, and again, it can become more complex if your situation calls for it, if you have better understanding of how, when you put things together, the system of systems would perform. So using the fuzzy inference system in, uh, ex as expressed in MATLAB, and it, it's very common, um, we can show the performance now, and this is performance scale on the right-hand side, and it goes from one to four, and we can only plot two of the attributes at the same time, so it's plotted against affordability, and what it does is it assumes that the other two attributes are totally average, right in the middle of the scale, two and a half. So given that situation, uh, you can see that if we're very high on the uh, performance side, if we're way up here at the edge, uh, we are acceptable. Anything above two and a half, right in the middle, is acceptable, um, even though the affordability is slightly below average. It's still acceptable. On the other hand, if the affordability gets a little better, I quickly go up this hill in a nonlinear way. Uh, if the affordability is just a little better, I go all the way to the top, the best possible performance out of the system of systems. Again, relatively speaking, uh, given that the other two attributes are completely average, which is, you, you can't see where they are, but you have to know that to understand how this chart looks. So. Given the membership functions and the ability to change those around and scale them and the rules, you can make this very nonlinear surface for evaluating your system of systems and say, I can plot any of my system of systems because I have a, an evaluation uh, tool, an assessment of the system of systems based on the structure, the, the system selected and the way they're interconnected right here, and you can pick this off this plot and say, 
the whole system of system is very good for that architecture, or the whole system of, very, of system of systems is uh, poor or somewhere in the middle for the arrangement that you have. And uh, I believe I'm done there. We have a whole series of publications uh, produced from this uh, uh, project, Philosos. There's uh, 15 total. We have several journal papers uh, that are uh, in the process. Uh, these three have been accepted, and there's a couple more uh, that are in work. And this is our project team. Uh, I'm one of the students down on the bottom, Lou Pape. And uh, everyone else has done uh, various little pieces of the Philosos system, and I believe they'll talk to you in the other uh, videos. This project was supported by the CERC, Systems Engineering Research Council, through uh, uh, Stevens Institute of Technology.